Today, I'm talking about charge and current. To understand electricity, we've got to know a little bit about atoms. Atoms are these tiny little particles that make up everything. And atoms have got neutrons and protons in the middle of them. And they've got electrons whizzing around the outside of them. Now the neutrons are neutral, they've got no charge. Protons, however, are positive, and electrons are negative. Electrons can move from place to place. Basically, they might be able to move from atom to atom within the material. They might also be able to move from one material to another. And we can see this if we rub a cloth against a comb. We then take that comb and place it next to a stream of water and we can see the stream of water is moving towards the comb. The reason for that is as we rubbed the comb against the cloth, we were transferring electrons from the cloth to the comb. It's getting a collection of negative electrons, which means the comb is becoming negatively charged. Similarly, because the cloth is losing electrons, it is becoming positively charged. This is what we mean by charge. Because the comb is negatively charged and we place it next to water, which is polar, meaning it has positive and negative sides to its molecules, the positive parts are attracted to the negative charge of the comb, and so the water stream is attracted to the comb. Now, as I mentioned, electrons can flow from atom to atom within some materials. It's this flow of electrons that allows electricity to be transferred. This flow of electrons is what a current is. Some materials allow these electrons to be moved a lot easier than others. Metals are materials that generally allow electrons to move quite easily, and that's why metals make very good conductors of electricity. So if we know that electricity is a flow of electrons, how can we make these electrons flow? Well, a battery is an example of something that can create a flow of electrons. Inside of a battery, there is a chemical reaction that creates a collection of electrons on one side. That side becomes negative. The other side of the battery, which has an absence of electrons, is therefore positive. Electrons, which are negative, are attracted to positive, and they really want to get back to the positive side of the battery. And they will do that if they are connected to the positive side via something that allows electrons to be transferred from atom to atom. Basically, if you connect the negative side of the battery to the positive side, the electrons will flow. When we're talking about electricity, it's really helpful if we can quantify this value for current. Current is basically the amount of electrons that are flowing in any unit of time. But just like if you want to buy sugar, you don't talk about the amount of granules of sugar you buy because sugar is absolutely tiny. Well, similarly, electrons are absolutely tiny and it's not very convenient to talk about the number of electrons that are flowing in any unit of time. Instead, we consider a batch of electrons. We can talk about coulombs. Now, coulombs are basically this many electrons. Now that's a really, really big number, and to be honest, you don't really need to remember it. Just understand that we are talking about this big, big, big batch of electrons flowing in any unit of time. The number of coulombs that are flowing per second is known as amperes. One coulomb per second is one ampere. We don't usually say amperes, it's more common to say amps, and it's given the symbol A. And we can see this symbol represented on a whole host of electrical devices. When thinking about electricity, it's not enough only to think about the number of coulombs that are flowing in any unit of time. We also need to think about the amount of work that each coulomb can do. This is the idea of potential difference or voltage, and that's in the next video.